Hello, how are my fantastic fourth graders? Man, what a beautiful day. We've had sunshine almost all day. Bluebell made me laugh earlier. She saw me grab my book and she took off and ran and got in the gator. She knew it was time for story time. So I thought I, thought I would give a shout out to Hayden. Thanks for listening. I heard that you're enjoying the story. So thanks so much for listening. And I wanna get back to a little bit of chapter 24, how the story ended. Melinda stood up. If you remember, she has Jeff on the ground. Okay, and they're counting. Lori is, Lori is slamming down her hands on the, the, the ground and counting to 10. Lori held Melinda's arm high in the air, holding her nose with her other hand. She bellowed, the winner and still champion of the world, Marvelous Melinda. Colleen clapped her hands. Today we're going to start with tw chapter 25. <clears throat> we'll read 25 and 26, okay? Chapter 25. <clears throat> I'm going to be good, thought Bradley. And then when everybody sees how good I am, they'll know I'm not a monster. And Mrs. Ebel will give you a gold star, said Ronnie. Bradley was so excited, he didn't realize he was putting on two different colored socks, a blue one and a green one. He tied his shoelaces, then went into the bathroom and looked at himself in the mirror. His black eye was almost all gone. It had faded into a light brownish yellowish color. He hurried out to breakfast. His mother made oatmeal for him. I hate hot cereal, he complained. You'll eat what you're served, said his father. This isn't a restaurant. He frowned, not because he had to eat oatmeal, but because he realized he never should have said he hated it. That was something the bad Bradley would say. The good Bradley liked hot, lumpy cereal. He took a big spoonful and brought it to his mouth and swallowed the glop. Mmm, good, he said. But as he withdrew the spoon from his mouth, his elbow bumped his glass of orange juice. Claudia screamed and jumped up. Oh, Bradley, said his mother. His father glared at him. It was an axe. He started to say it was an accident, but then he remembered Carla didn't believe in accidents. That puzzled him. He wondered why he would want to spill his orange juice on purpose. He liked orange juice. It was the oatmeal he should have spilled. Well, are you just going to sit there or are you going to help your mother clean it up? Asked his father. He picked up his napkin to help, but his mother told him to stay out of her way. You'll only make a bigger mess, she said. Silently, he finished eating. As he headed back to his room, Claudia burst out laughing. What's so funny, he demanded. Look at your socks, she laughed. He looked down at his feet, then back at his sister, the laughing hyena. Thank you, Claudia, he said. I appreciate your sharing that with me. She stopped laughing and stared at him. He walked into his room, sat on the edge of his bed, and took off his sneakers. Wow, said Bartholomew, you were so good. I would have punched her face in if I was you. He's going to get a gold star today, said Ronnie. Bradley changed his socks, but once again, he was so excited thinking about the gold star that he didn't pay attention to what he was doing. He took the green sock off his right foot. He took the blue sock off of his left foot. He put the green sock on, the, on his left foot and the blue sock on his right foot. Then he put his shoes on and left for school, determined to be good. He walked into class and took his seat. Last seat, last row. He sat up straight with his hands folded on top of his desk. He tried to hold back his excitement as he glanced at the chart on the wall next to him. Jeff came in and sat down. Last seat, second to last row. Bradley saw him out of the corner of his eye and then turned to get a better look. Jeff had a black eye. What are you staring at, chalkers? Jeff snarled. Hey, hey you, you two look like twins, exclaimed, exclaimed Sean, the girl who sat in front of Jeff. 
Turn your ugly face around, Jeff snapped. Oh, shut up, Bradley, said Sean, turning around. Bradley looked at the back of Sean's head. She still thinks I'm a monster, he realized. But, but once I get my gold star, then she'll know I'm good. For the rest of the morning, he sat at attention with his eyes fixed on Mrs. Ebel. He kept wondering if she had noticed how good he, has, he was yet. As he walked outside for recess, he was almost certain there'd be a gold star next to his name when he returned. Curtis and Doug, two of Jeff's friends, came out of Mrs. Sharp's class. What's the big idea? asked Doug. Hitting Jeff when he's not looking, said Curtis. Huh? said Bradley. Doug pushed him. He stumbled backward into Jeff, who pushed him back the other way. Bradley looked around. He was surrounded. Jeff's our friend, said Robbie. Yeah, said Brian. You hit me when I wasn't looking, said Jeff. And my hands were full of groceries. I didn't want to break the eggs. Chicken chalkers, said Dan. There was a space between Andy and Doug. Bradley dashed through it and ran across the playground. Jeff and his friends chased after him. Bradley looked back at them and smashed into a girl standing on one foot. The girl fell onto the hard hopscotch ground and wailed. I'm telling Bradley, said one of her friends. I I'm sorry, Bradley said hopelessly, then continued running. He ran up the concrete steps and entered the school building through the auditorium. From there, he walked quickly to the library. What do you want, Bradley? asked Mrs. Wilcott, the librarian. Uh, nothing, he muttered as he sat down at one of the tables. He leaned his head against his hands, propped up by his elbows. What if Carla's wrong, he worried. What if I really am a monster? I don't want any trouble from you, Bradley, said Mrs. Wilcott. Chapter 26 We'll get you at lunch, chalkers, Robbie whispered as Bradley returned to class. You're late, said Mrs. Ebel. He sat at his desk, last seat, last row, and looked at the chart on the wall next to him. Of course, there was no gold star next to his name. He had already done three things wrong. First, he had knocked over a girl and made her cry. Second, he was late getting back to class. And third and worst of all, his name was Bradley Chalkers. As long as his name was Bradley Chalkers, he'd never get a gold star. They don't give gold stars to monsters. They beat up monsters. He looked around at Jeff, Robbie, Russell, and Brian. He had to concentrate very hard to keep from crying. The worst part wasn't getting beat up. The worst part was that he knew everyone would love it so much. He imagined the whole school, the boys, the girls, and even the teachers standing by and cheering as Jeff's gang took turns hitting and kicking him. When the bell rang for lunch, he slowly took his paper sack out of his desk. We'll be waiting for you outside, Jeff said to him. Bradley watched him walk out the door. He walked slowly toward the front of the room, then suddenly dashed out the other door and into the hall. Bradley, come back here, Mrs. Ebel yelled. He kept running. So what if he got in trouble? What difference did it make? He pulled on the door to the library. It wouldn't budge. The library was closed during lunch. He tried to think of somewhere else he'd be safe. There he is, said Doug, stepping out of the auditorium. Bradley turned and ran back the way he had come. He rounded a corner, then stopped and made a quick and desperate decision. He opened the, girl, the door to the girl's bathroom, closed his eyes, and he stepped inside. He opened his eyes. Luckily, the room was empty. He held his breath and listened. Nothing could be worse than being beaten up inside a girl's bathroom. They'd probably stick my head in the girl's toilet, he thought. He waited. He didn't hear anything. He looked around. The floor and the bottom half of the walls were covered with green tile. There were two white sinks and a paper towel dispenser. There were three toilets and three separate stalls. Each stall had a door. It looked very much like the boys' bathroom. Girl toilets appeared to be the same as the boy toilets. He was disappointed. He couldn't risk going back into the hall. He leaned against one of the stalls reached into his brown paper sack and took out his roast beef sandwich. <gasps> Someone was opening the door. 
He quickly put the sandwich back in the bag and hopped into a stall, closing the door behind him. He stood on the toilet so his feet couldn't be seen. He listened. He heard a person walk across the tiled floor and then enter the stall next to him. He covered his mouth with his hand as he heard some familiar but very private sounds. At last, the toilet flushed and he heard the person zip her pants and walk across to the sink. He heard the sound of running water and then a paper towel pulled down from the dispenser. Finally, the bathroom door opened and shut. He exhaled, hopped off the toilet, and stepped out of the stall and froze. Two girls were staring at him. One was the girl who had used the toilet next to him. The other had just entered. He wondered which was which. Then he heard the loudest scream he had ever heard in his whole life. That answered his question. He darted past them, opened the door, and flew into the hall. He rounded a corner, came to a door, and pounded wildly on it until it opened. Bradley, said Carla. Hello, Carla, and he held out his hand. It's a pleasure to see you today. <laughs> All right, guys, that finishes up chapter 26. <laughs> Were you expecting Bradley to end up in the girls' bathroom, too? I hope that you can tell that Bradley is trying to make a change. We are to that top. The climax, the plot is starting to change a little bit, isn't it? Because Bradley's starting to change. Can characters change? Yes, they can. We know that characters can change throughout the course of, of a story. And in this case, it's a change for the better for Bradley. He's really trying hard to be a better person. All right, guys, I hope you have, you've had a great day, and I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye, guys. Tell them bye, Bluebell. Tell them bye. <laughs>